Maybe it's not exciting, but it's crucial to our lives, health insurance. For those of you who get it through the Your Health Idaho State Insurance Exchange, open enrollment is now. One big difference this year is Medicaid expansion. Who's eligible for it? How will it work? Where does it stand as the state works to implement it? And will expansion hurt Your Health Idaho? Today, Your Health Idaho Executive Director Pat Kelly and Idaho Department of Health and Welfare Director David Jepson have the answers you need. Ahead on Viewpoint. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. And welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. Today we're focusing on health insurance, specifically the Your Health Idaho State Health Insurance Exchange and Medicaid expansion in Idaho. We'll look at the two programs separately and how they intertwine now that Medicaid expansion is a reality. Last November, voters approved Medicaid expansion by a very solid 61% of the vote. Since then, the state has been working to implement it. It goes into effect on January 1st. But what exactly it will look like has yet to be determined. That's because the state has a applied to the federal government for five waivers, such as adding work requirements for Medicaid expansion recipients, but those issues haven't yet been settled. Now, those eligible for insurance under the brand new Medicaid expansion can apply for that coverage now. And here are the Medicaid expansion eligibility requirements. You must be an Idaho resident, of course, who is a U.S. citizen or a legal resident between the ages of 19 and 64. And you have to meet income requirements, meaning your income falls within the range of 100 to 138 percent of the federal poverty level. Do you remember hearing about close the gap in the news? That 100 to 138 percent is the gap we're referring to. Now, for example, expansion provides Medicaid for a single person who owns or who earns between roughly $12,500 and $17,200 per year. For a family of four to qualify for Medicaid, the yearly income would be $25,750 to roughly $35,500 per year. We have a hot link on KTVB.com where you can get all the info on requirements and how to apply. Now, at the same time, open enrollment for insurance through the Your Health Idaho Insurance Exchange is now. It runs through December 16th. 116 medical plans and 13 dental plans are available from six participating insurance carriers. We also have a link for this on KTBB.com to sign up or for more information. That is yourhealthidaho.org. Today, my guests are two people who can help us understand all of this. They are Your Health Idaho Executive Director, Pat Kelly, and Idaho Department of Health and Welfare Director, David Jepson. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here today. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. It's a lot to explain, so I really appreciate your time, and we're going to dedicate most of the show to this today. So first of all, Pat, with Your Health Idaho, it's been around for a few years now, but with Medicaid expansion kicking in, what's going to be different this year? Well, the primary difference now that Medicaid expansion is in effect is eligibility requirements. And, and like you mentioned in the opening, um, our eligibility this year is for folks that make 139% of poverty level all the way up to 400%. And to put that in context, that's a, a family of four making just over $17 an hour all the way up to $100,000 a year. The range is really broad. And what that means is we see almost 90% of our enrollments, or nine out of 10, uh, receive that tax credit that saves them over 80% on their monthly premium. How many people roughly get their health insurance through Your Health Idaho? So we've consistently had over 100,000 Idahoans that utilize Your Health Idaho to find a plan that just best fits their family. Um, we expect some of that uh, will decline this year with um, Medicaid expansion going into effect. About 18,000 of our enrollments are between 100 and 138 percent of the federal poverty level. And that'll switch over to Medicaid expansion. That's exactly right and that'll be done effective January 1 of 2020. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit too. But, um, Director Jepson, uh, first year for this, I understand about just under 40,000 people so far have applied for coverage under Medicaid expansion. How's it going so far? It's going really well. Uh, we've had a tremendous response from the public uh, wanting to know if they are eligible for Medicaid expansion. Uh, we've run uh, many of those, in fact, all of those folks that have applied through that process to date and have uh, found about 40,000 of them who will be eligible and will, will receive Medicaid on January 1st. And how many do you estimate are eligible? That's a great question. Uh, it's no way to know for sure, but our best estimate is about 90 to 91,000 Idahoans will be eligible for Medicaid expansion. Now, does 
Is there like an open enrollment period for Medicaid expansion like there is for plans through Your Health Idaho, or is it a, a continual thing that will, you know, is kind of always open? Uh, Medicaid is always open. Medicaid is considered a payer of last resort. Uh, and so whenever someone is, that becomes eligible or thinks they become eligible, they can apply at any time. We have a large um, amount going through right now in conjunction with the open enrollment for Your Health Idaho, but they can apply at any time throughout the year. For both of you, um, what are you urging people to do right now and if they may not be sure where they fall? Well, I think the Patty. most important message is don't wait. Um, you know, open enrollment for Your Health Idaho goes through December 16th. Feels like a long time away, uh, but it's, it's really month. not. It, yeah. It'll be here before we know it. Um, and also, um, eligibility is determined by your income and your, and your family composition. Do you have kids? Are you married? So encouraging people to apply, either via our website, yourhealthidaho.org, or through the Department of Health and Welfare. Um, by determining that eligibility, they will then know whether you're eligible for Medicaid or for a tax credit on Your Health Idaho. And how about for you, sirs? Basically, same advice for the folks same, out there. My advice is the same, which is uh, come find out if you're eligible. Uh, through Your Health Idaho, as Pat just explained, there's many affordable options for folks. And for those that are eligible for Medicaid, uh, that's, that, that's an option that's available for them as well. And they can apply if they apply through Your Health Idaho or they come to the Department of Health and Welfare website or they come in a, a Health and Welfare office or call or, or um, email. Uh, all of those channels are channels that will work for them to find that out. And as Pat mentioned, the Department of Health and Welfare determines not only Medicaid eligibility, but we also determine el eligibility for the tax credit. So whatever door they come in, they'll, we will catch them and help them understand what they're eligible for. So if somebody right now, like those 18,000 you mentioned, um, get insurance through the Your Health Idaho Insurance Exchange, but they qualify for Medicaid, do they have to do anything or would they automatically be rolled out of their coverage that they're buying through YHI and into Medicaid expansion? That's a great question. Uh, for many folks, we can validate their, their income eligibility and other eligibility requirements automatically through connections we have with uh, like the um, Department of Labor and other sources mm -hmm. of information. And for those folks that we can verify their information, we automatically we will do that and enroll them and let them know that they are now eligible for Medicaid or that they've um, remain eligible for a tax credit. There are some folks that we're not able to verify their information, and we have to verify information before we can do either of those two things. And for those folks, we are reaching out and letting them know, both the exchange as well as uh, the Department of Health and Welfare, that we need some additional information to verify if they're eligible for those programs. And obviously, if somebody is automatically switched over, then they would also be notified because that's a big change for them. That is correct. Uh, there'll be multiple communications that go to those individuals, uh, both the written email and calls, frankly, to, to let them know what their new coverage is and what that means for them and their family. Um, Pat, I want to show what your website looks like. Once Great. again, the Your Health Idaho website. What kind of things can people find there? Um, and there, I also understand that there's help for people who may not know maybe the right questions to ask. You have these experts available, right? Right, so yourhealthidaho.org uh, has a number of resources, as you mentioned, Doug, and one of the ones we really encourage people to use is our network of over 800 agents and brokers across the state. Um, and when you go to our website in the upper right corner, there is a button that says find help. Uh, click on that button, enter your zip code, and a list of agents will drop down. And they're generally in your area. They're trusted friends, neighbors, and community members that can sit down with you, understand your budget, your medical needs, um, and those do change uh, from time to time, as well as um, what type of coverage you're looking for. Um, that combination of things with that discussion uh, really helps you find the plan that's best for you. As we mentioned, there are 113 that's right. uh, choices, I believe. If and I, if and I there are a lot of choices um, yeah. for health, health insurance plans, and people's um, needs change every year. Mm -hmm. So while we do automatically renew people each year, we still encourage them to look at the plan that they've been renewed into to make sure it still works for their family, their budget, and also for their medical needs. If people want to talk to a human being to get the answers, is the best advice for you that you have is for them to call the Health and Welfare Department? Well, they can call either that, uh, the Health the Department of Health and Welfare or your Health Idaho. Uh, I will, just a week ago, Monday, we had 5,000 calls that came in. And so there one day? In one day. There's a lot of folks is that it are very just open? interested. <laughs> yeah, just open. Uh, I know uh, that the exchange is also experiencing calls. But yes, we want to 
be available in any way that works for those consumers, whether they want to do it online or do it email or call, they're welcome to do any, come into one of our offices, we're happy to sit down face to face. 5,000 calls. Yeah, a week ago. On day. one day. In one okay. day. Um, one question I did see that came up was, if somebody is already, um, uh, will Medicaid expansion affect somebody who's already on Medicaid? Um, the answer to that is no, they will stay, they, they will stay on Medicaid as they are today. Um, so there'll be no impact to them. This is really about enrolling those that are newly eligible due to the expansion. Um, I just want to bring up the, the eligibility requirements one more time sure. um, on the graphic and just maybe have you emphasize anything that you feel is, is particularly important by this. Um, and the graphic that we're going to show um, has those income guidelines once again, but also, you know, being a, a U.S. citizen and an Idaho resident between the ages of 19 to 64, and that's because after 64, someone would be eligible for Medicare. That is correct. correct. They okay. would be eligible for Medicare. And the income ranges you have shown there are the ones that would be currently on the exchange, but for those individuals that are below those incomes, anywhere from zero up to those numbers would also be eligible for Medicaid expansion. Okay, yeah, so. those numbers just representing the gap population, yeah. as we say. Well, I want to continue the conversation. We're going to take a quick commercial break here. So um, still ahead, what will Medicaid expansion actually look like? on January 1st as the state waits for some decisions from the federal government and how will expansion affect the Your Health Idaho Exchange and how it operates. We touched on that a little bit. We'll get more into that coming up after the break. At Garden Plaza Valley View, our residents enjoy a carefree and active lifestyle and we take care of all the details. Come discover a better way to live at Garden Plaza Valley View. Call or visit us online to learn more. At Magic Electric and Plumbing, we understand your time is valuable, which is why we've built one of the most trusted names in home services in Southern Idaho. With amazing customer care, licensed, knowledgeable, and friendly technicians, we believe you shouldn't have to waste your time waiting for a service provider to fix your home service issues. Our technicians will be there when they say they're going to be there, and our customer care team will keep you updated and call you when your technician is 30 minutes from your front door. So that way, you can get back to doing what you love. Contact Magic Electric and Plumbing today. Your Southern Idaho Honda dealers are on it. Check out the new 2019 Honda CRV. More passenger volume than the Toyota RAV4. Check. Top safety pick rated by IIHS. Check. For the fourth time, named best buy of the year in its class by Kelly Blue Book. Check. Now, check it out at Tom Scott Honda Nampa and Larry H. Miller Honda Boise. Check. Your Southern Idaho Honda dealers. people are going above and beyond. He called her his good luck charm a few weeks ago. I love it. Meet a 90-year-old superfan who never misses a chance to see her boys on the blue. An all-new 7-0, tonight on the News at 10. And welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. Today we're focusing on the Your Health Idaho State Health Insurance Exchange and Medicaid expansion, how they work and how they intertwine. Today, my guests are Your Health Idaho Executive Director Pat Kelly and Idaho Department of Health and Welfare Director Dave Jepson. Um, Director Jepson, first of all, where, what is the status of Medicaid expansion and implementation? Where does it stand today? Um, that's a great question. We actually uh, just received this week our formal approval from the federal government to move forward with Medicaid expansion. Uh, and we are on target with that. We're in the process, as we talked about earlier, of enrolling those that are eligible and encourage those that think they're eligible to apply. Um, there were, um, th that's the Medicaid expansion piece. And probably the most important message I can say is Medicaid expansion goes live regardless of where we are with waivers and other things, January 1st, that's when it goes live. And let's talk about those waivers or restrictions a little bit. Um, they cover several different categories. Um, can you just give a brief list of what you're waiting to hear back from and, sure. and uh, what you expect in terms of a timeline? Yes, uh, waivers generally take anywhere from a year to two years to get approved. Uh, so we've applied for uh, four waivers now, or are coming up on our fourth waiver now, uh, and uh, we'll hopefully hear back in the next year what the answer to those are. Um, and those would be um, 
work requirements for Medicaid expansion recipients, also um, the right to choose whether to stay on the health insurance okay. exchange or to get Medicaid expansion, and also um, like family planning services and inpatient behavioral illness treatment. So you haven't gotten any indication yet from the federal government when you might hear back on those? Yeah, so uh, if I just go through that list, um, on the, very, the first one that we submitted was the choice waiver, which would have allowed people um, between that 100 and 138 percent to choose if they wanted to stay on the exchange uh, with, with Director Kelly or to accept Medicaid. Uh, we have heard back from the federal government on that, that they um, uh, asked us to rethink about that and approach it a different way. Uh, so we're in the process of doing that. Uh, we've filed the work requirements waiver. We're waiting to hear back uh, what direction that the federal government has for us on that. Uh, and we've also filed the family planning waiver and we're waiting to hear back what the questions or direction they have for us on that. Um, the last one is to pay for uh, inpatient psychiatric care. Uh, that one will be filed before the end of the year. Um, and all of those we expect decisions uh, could be as much as 12 months from now before we hear what's going to happen with those. So with that being said then, what will Medicaid expansion look like when it goes live on January 1st? Um, it will go live without those waivers being applied. And so based on that, that means anyone between 19 and 64 who's a resident of Idaho who is in 0 to 138 percent of uh, the federal poverty level will be eligible for Medicaid expansion. And so they will get the coverage basically that others who are already under Medicaid receive. That's correct. And it's the same coverage for those that are on existing Medicaid versus those that will be coming into the expansion. They'll get that full coverage. Um, Pat, earlier we had um, mentioned that uh, you anticipate roughly 18,000 people um, who currently get their insurance through the Your Health Idaho uh, exchange could be moving over to uh, Medicaid expansion uh, coverage. How do you anticipate that affecting your health Idaho? Well, we've known that the possibility of Medicaid expansion happening for a number of years now. And so we've always been very pragmatic in our, in our financial views, very conservative fiscally in terms of how we approach things. And so we've actually planned for this. Um, we have uh, cash reserves that we can, uh, that we have in place of uh, needing to make policy changes or uh, system enhancements to adjust for Medicaid. Uh, we've uh, put the customer first in terms of how do we uh, make this as easy as possible. So if people are currently enrolled on the exchange and they become Medicaid eligible, they're not renewed for 2020, they move directly to Medicaid. Um, but in terms of the impacts to our operations, really quite minimal. Um, we've planned for it. Um, while it's a, about a 20% loss in our revenue and our customer base, we plan for it for years. and. Uh, we will continue to be financially sustainable, um, which has been one of the hallmarks of our exchange since the very beginning. So the, the health insurance exchange is, is healthy enough, pardon the pun, to, to withstand that loss? Absolutely. Um, we've really focused on long-term financial sustainability, and this is part of our plan. Everything we do at the exchange really has a three, four, five-year view, if not longer. Mm -hmm. uh, very much a, a, a private business approach to our finances and we're able to weather this type of a change uh, without really any impacts to our operations. Uh, one of the things that we, we talked with, uh, I talked with uh, Director uh, Jepson said was, you know, about the not knowing uh, what's the status with the waivers. And uh, I'm, I'm curious as um, what is the impact of not knowing if any of the restrictions lawmakers have been requesting will actually be approved or not? Are you addressing that through your Health Idaho as well? So we work very closely with the Department of Insurance and the Department of Health and Welfare and Director Jepson and his team. Um, we've created um, a number of changes within our technology to automate those changes. So when someone who uh, is currently enrolled becomes Medicaid eligible, whether that's today or in six months, uh, we know that via kind of the integration with our systems and that person would move directly to Medicaid and be able to be canceled for their uh, Your Health Idaho insurance. If somebody does, if that waiver comes through and somebody can choose to stay on Your Health Idaho, would they still get a subsidy though? Um, or do so they lose that, that support because expansion coverage would be available to them? So if the coverage choice waiver were to uh, move forward, and, and as Director Jepson mentioned earlier, they're still in the process of mm -hmm. uh, adjusting that, people would have a choice uh, to either choose a tax credit and enroll via Your Health Idaho or move to Medicaid. And we would be able to essentially uh, handle any of those choices that would come as a result of that waiver. 
Um, and finally, uh, Director Jepson, if so it kicks off on January 1st. It looks like at this point those waivers uh, won't be in effect, perhaps. As they come into effect, if they do in the future, how will that affect people who are receiving coverage through Medicaid expansion? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, if, if those waivers are approved at some point in the future, we would then start to apply them to the population or to the people that they impact. And we would give notification and clarification to folks as to what's happening and then let them know what their options are at that point. So for example, if the choice waiver was approved, we would let them know, hey, you can choose now. You can choose to either take your tax credit and uh, buy private coverage or you can stay on Medicaid. And we'd ask them to choose and give them direction on how to uh, over to the YHI exchange. And same thing with work requirements. Then with you work would say, requirements. okay, now you're gonna have to report this. That's right. And so for work requirements, that would apply to all uh, Medicaid expansion individuals. And so we would notify them now that the, that the work requirement is now in place. We would clarify what that means. Uh, there's a, a bunch of definitions of what, what meets those work requirements. We would inform them of that. We would then start the process of verifying if they meet those work requirements. And those waivers and restrictions only apply to Medicaid expansion, correct? Not the people who are on traditional Medicaid? That is correct, except for the inpatient psychiatric payment. We, that would apply to all Medicaid. Gentlemen, thank you so much for the information. I really appreciate your time. Um, and helping to explain this issue as it's, it is crunch time right now for both, for both issues. So yes. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Doug. you. And once again, everyone, I want to let you know that we do have hot links on ktvb.com uh, where you can get a lot of information. It, it'll take you straight to the Your Health Idaho website, and that's yourhealthidaho.org, or to the, health and well, or the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare's Medicaid expansion specific page. A lot of great information on there, very easy to navigate as well. It's not intimidating at all. Well, still ahead on Viewpoint, a special salute to service, a veteran showing it's never too late to say thank you to the heroes who served our country. Shop the outlet inside RC Willy for clearance savings on closeouts and discontinued items. Plus, incredible savings on new furniture, including dining sets for just $249. Physicians. We know. Extended hours. Unpredictable schedules. Huge amounts of debt to manage. Very high burnout rates. High stakes. Unbelievable amounts of pressure unfathomable accountability. Shifting and uncertain bureaucracy. So, to the thousands of Idaho's physicians, we say, thank you. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, doctors. Thank you to our physicians and surgeons. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, doctors. Choices, choices, choices. Shop at Idaho's number one volume Honda dealer. Larry H. Miller Honda of Boise. Idaho's number one volume Honda dealer. Online at lmhonda.com. Driven by you. Leasing new select Hondas for zero down means you always get more for less at Larry H. Miller Honda in Boise, Idaho's number one volume new Honda dealer. Always more for less at Larry H. Miller Honda of Boise. Online at lmhonda.com. Driven by you. Lifestyle's what I love. I love to do it. I love to celebrate local businesses. I love to celebrate those organizations that make such a difference. I love to celebrate all the special individuals that contribute to this amazing community. And helping people find those solutions and answers so they can navigate this world to the best of their ability. With Veterans Day having just passed, I wanted to share a special salute to service. 16 million Americans served in the U.S. military during World War II. And according to the Department of Veterans Affairs, just under 400,000 of them are still alive. And we're losing them at a rate of nearly 300 a day. While many of them are far removed from their years of service, there's an Idaho veteran who is showing it's never too late to honor those men and women with a thank you. Here's Brian Holmes. I think I'm ready. In a modest house in Fruitland. Well, you better let me check. Trudy Haynes makes a final formal inspection. All my buttons buttoned. I get all your buttons buttoned. Just so that he presents the sharpest image he can of a military man. Of her husband, Jerry. That's the important part. 
40 years removed from his time in the Army National Guard, where he spent 25 years as part of the U.S. Air Defense Program, Jerry's connection to country is no surprise. But we're really proud of the family. In fact, the Haineses hail from a long line of military men. World War One. With photos that go as far back as the Civil War. That's my great-grandfather here. Which is why, on a mid-fall, mid-afternoon, Jerry steps out in full-dress uniform to fulfill another mission. For the last five years, Jerry has helped Heart and Home Hospice with a special assignment. It's a privilege for me to be there. They call them pinning ceremonies. And today, that task takes the 83-year-old to Ontario. Hi. This is Jerry. To the home of Raymond Heck. There's a lot of people here, guys. Who 76 years ago. Yeah, that's him right there. Volunteered to fight in World War II. What kind of plane is that, do you remember? B-24. Now, at the age of 96, he's fighting his own heart a battle that's taking its toll nearly every day. What was the year you got in? 43. It's a similar situation Jerry has found himself in more than two dozen times before. Whether they peeled potatoes or were in combat, they're still a veteran. And they deserve honor of their country because they raised their hand to serve their country. And so, guide their choices, following a prayer, because she is our flag, our America, and a poem, what I'd like to do now is to pin you with a miniature American flag. The retired major places a pin on Raymond's shirt to commemorate a commitment. There you go. Thank you. That is often no more than a faint memory. And I salute you because this is your day. And I thank you for your service. It's a big deal. Thank you. A gesture of gratitude. Even if they say it's not a big deal, it's a big deal. With a little more weight. I feel like there's a lot of pain at end of life, um, spiritual and emotional pain. And sometimes these guys have never been thanked for what they did. And sometimes, <laughs> well, the gratitude. I guess I should say something, I don't know. Goes both ways. It's a wonderful family. I'm proud of all of them. Just wish their mother was here to, hear, to be with us. She's here. Yeah, she can hear you, Grandpa. It's a short ceremony. Ready right here. Okay, right. One, two, three. Beautiful. That as he leaves, Jerry knows will linger for a vet's legacy. Dad loves his family, so yeah, having everybody around is a big deal for him. I think it's wonderful. I think it's very important because they're the reason that we have our freedom. Brian Holmes. Well, I think I'm giving him something. Idaho's News Channel 7. Last week, Jerry and his wife were in Orlando to receive a national award from the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization. He was one of four winners of this year's Volunteers Are the Foundation of Hospice Awards. That's all of our time for this week's Viewpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Doug Petcash. I'll see you tomorrow on today's morning news and then right back here next Sunday morning for another Viewpoint.